Hey guys, this is Post Production Pi. In the previous section, we covered preferences in Lightroom, setting your preferences up. And these preferences were actually global preferences, meaning that the settings that we're changing affect every single catalog and affect everything that we do in Lightroom as a whole. Now, what this section is going to briefly go over is just the catalog settings, which are settings that are specific to each and every catalog. So every catalog you load is going to have its own set of catalog settings that you'd specify here. Uh, by the way, the hotkey to get to the catalog settings is Control Alt Comma, okay? Or you can just click it into the Edit and Catalog Settings, switch. it's probably easier. All right, now in our first general tab, what we first see is the information. This is just going to show general information for that Lightroom catalog, not any of the images but just the catalog. So we see the location, we see the actual catalog name, which is Paul and Sheila Engagement, and LRCAT stands for Lightroom Catalog. Uh, we see the date that the catalog was created, last time it was backed up, which it hasn't been, oops, my bad, um, and last time it's been optimized. Uh, it'll also show you the size of the catalog. As you guys are making more edits and more changes to the images inside the catalog, the catalog file is going to get larger in size. Now, it, it's not significant because even the largest catalog file that we worked with is only like 60, 70 megabytes, but it will kind of grow in size as you're making more and more changes and importing more photos. Okay, now our next set, oh, by the way, one quick item. If you ever uh, open up a catalog file and you kind of forget where that actual catalog file is located on your hard drive, just hit show right here. It'll actually pull up Windows Explorer and show you the exact folder where the catalog file is located, and here it is. Paul and Sheila Engagement LRCAT. All right, close that out. Now the next box is the backup box. And what this is, it's going to tell you when you want Lightroom to remind you to back up your catalog. Uh, you can set this for different preferences, whether it's never, once a week, once a month, uh, once a day, or every time you close Lightroom. Uh, I'm kind of bad when it comes to backing up my actual Lightroom catalog. Uh, I, I don't do it very often. Even when it reminds me, I don't do it. So I'm just going to set mine to never. But I probably would recommend that you guys set yours on like once a week or once a day or something like that and actually do your backups. Um, now keep in mind though that this backup is strictly for the catalog file itself, not for the images that are in that catalog file. So that's completely separate. If you want to back up the images, you got to do it somewhere else. Um, and, and by the way, if you are doing these backups, make sure you're backing it, uh, backing it up onto a separate drive or another location because there's not really any point to backing it up to the same place because if your hard drive goes out or whatever happens, then your catalog file is gone anyway. So. If you're going to back it up, back it up to a separate place. All right. Now let's go to our second tab, the file handling tab. The first set of options we have here is the preview cache. And what this basically is, is you're going to set the preview options for this specific catalog file. So because we're going to learn later uh, that we're going to actually render previews before we go into actual editing, this isn't going to matter too much for most of you. But the standard preview size is just what is when you're importing, what is that standard preview size for this catalog? It defaults to 1440 pixels, which is fine because we're going to specify later on. We're going to show you how to basically set it up so before you start working, all your full size previews are rendered anyway, so this doesn't really matter too much. Um, this is the preview quality, whether you want high, medium, low. It defaults to medium, that's fine again. Um, automatically discard one to one previews after a certain amount of time. Now, right now it's set to 30 days, and that's fine. What this basically means is a one-to-one -one preview is a full resolution preview of a file. So when I click in on the image, if Lightroom has not already rendered this image as a preview, it's, this is when it's going to create the one-to-one -one preview. And, and so that's a full resolution image so I can zoom in and I can check it out, what it looks like as a, at a one-to-one -one ratio. This is not one-to-one. -one. This is zoomed out at like 25% or whatever it is. It's fitting it just to... It's fitting it just to fit this little screen right here. Okay, if I click one to one, you can see what the actual size is right there. All right, so that's what a one to one uh, preview is. So I'm gonna go back to my catalog settings, file handling. Now these one to one previews actually take up quite a bit of a bit of space. Again, like we discussed before, it can be anywhere from five to twenty five to forty megabytes, depending on the size of the uh, the original file that you're previewing. So it's a good idea to discard them after a certain amount of time because they're taking up a lot of space on your hard drive. Now this depends on how much time it depends on how fast your workflow is. If you find that you 
finish each catalog within a day, then set it to a day. If it's a week, then set it to a week. I find that usually I'm done with each catalog file, like a wedding is usually done and backed up and out within 30 days, and I'm not using it anymore. So I set mine to after 30 days, which is the default, actually. Um, import sequence numbers, not super huge, not super important. What this basically is, you're going to specify the import number. So when you start importing, it's going to start with this specific number. If I set it to 555, it'll start at that number. One is fine. It's the default. Photos imports can tell you how many are imported. Uh, again, leave it at default. fine. Um, and then I'm going to go to the metadata, metadata tab. Now, in the metadata tab, we're, we're editing preferences for this catalog on first editing metadata. Uh, this first option offer suggestions from recently entered values. What that means is basically if I close this out and I go to my library, I'm actually already in library, I go to say metadata. I can fill in information here like the title, captions, copyright. Well, that option right there is basically going to, oops, sorry, let me go back to catalog settings, not the preferences. Close up. Catalog settings. Okay. So this option is basically going to say, it's like another form of autocomplete. So whenever it recognizes a previously entered value, it's going to it's going to offer the suggestions as autocomplete. If you want to clear all the previous suggestions, just hit this button right here. It'll clear everything from before. Um, include develop settings in metadata inside JPEG, TIFF, and PSD files. Now, this might be something that you guys want to remove. What this basically means is that all the settings from this develop module, like whatever you're doing to those files, it's going to be stored in the outputted file. So if you're rendering these to say JPEGs, well, that information from your develop module, whatever these settings are, your, your recovery, blacks, brightness, all the way down, those are going to be stored in the metadata. If you're rendering these and giving them to clients, you may not want them to have all that information. And so you would unclick this and you would hit OK and it'll actually make sure that none of the develop settings make it into those exported files or to the PSD files or TIFFs. Okay. So yeah, I, I would probably keep that off unless you need it on for some reason. Um, especially if you're a studio that's delivering files to a client, you really don't want everybody to have all your settings and stuff like that from Lightroom. So just take it out. Uh, now this next option, automatically write changes into XMP. What this is for is basically if you are editing files in Lightroom and you want those changes that you're doing in Lightroom to be visible in other applications like third-party applications, you need to write those changes into XMP files. And an XMP file is, they're known as sidecar files. And what that is is a file that's it's stored right next to or right beside the original RAW file or JPEG file that you're working on. And it's called an, it's labeled XMP. And it contains all the data, the developing data that you use to, to process that photo. So when I open it up in another application, well, it's going to look for those sidecar files, and if it finds them, it will actually load up those preferences and those processing settings right away. So you'll see the changes that are made in Lightroom. If you're not using any other applications other than Lightroom to, to edit, uh, Lightroom or Photoshop, then don't save changes in XMP files because it's going to create extra files, which just ends up being more space. It's not a ton of more space, but it is doubling up on all your files. Um, if you are, then check this and it'll automatically write changes in XMP. And notice that it comes default as off and when it's off it does say warning, changes made in Lightroom will not automatically be visible in other applications. Okay, so it tells you. This next option for EXIF data is write date or time changes into proprietary RAW files. If you select this, what it means is if you make any changes to the date or time settings, to the date or time EXIF data in your Lightroom catalog, it's actually going to write over the date and timestamps on the original RAW file. This is a permanent change and you cannot you cannot go back to the way those RAW files were before. So I'd probably recommend keeping it off, which is the default, because um, if you turn it on and you make a change to that the date and time, you can never go back to the original date and time on that RAW file. So off is fine unless you really want it on and you can do it, but at your own discretion. Alright guys, we're done with the catalog settings and let's move on to the next section.